Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I would like to talk about the different programming languages that computer engineers are going to learn and computer engineers should learn by the time they graduate. So let's get started. So I'd say the first programming language would be C++. If you're an engineer, any sort of programming, you should learn C++ because it's a very fundamental language. It's been around for years. I think it was one of the very first, um, no, it wasn't. 4chan, I think, was one of the first languages. Um, but C++ is probably going to be your number one language that you should learn and you probably will learn as a computer engineer. I know that when I was um, an undergraduate, all the programming courses that I had taken, granted there weren't very many, but they were all C++ oriented. So I needed to learn that language in order to understand it to do the homework. And also anything dealing with C++, such as C, just regular C, it's kind of like a smaller subset of C++. So there's C, a uh, language that you could learn and you might, you probably will learn. If you know C++, then you'll know C. Um, and there's also C Sharp, which is a object-oriented programming language. So what that means is you can, if you have structures such as like a car and like, oh, the car is red, the car is small, it's a Toyota Camry, you know, a red Toyota Camry. And that means that the object would be the car. And in that object car, there would be make and model, which is a Toyota Camry. And then they would have the color, which is red and um, the size, which is small. So all of that goes into that one object called car. Based on that, you can have different objects, different cars that have a different make, a different model, a uh, different color and different size. And so all of those variables can be initialized differently and they would have all different instances of a car, if that makes sense. So you could have like obviously a Toyota Camry car, you could have a Honda Civic car, but the list goes on and on. And that's like an example of a object oriented type of programming and C Sharp is perfect for that. Um, I don't know when C Sharp came out, I can put that right here too, but like I said, if you know C++, then you can easily grasp C Sharp. Number two, and this is just for my personal preference and from what I understand and what I've been seeing, um, is Python. And the reason why I say Python is because it's becoming more and more prevalent. A lot more companies are integrating this type of programming language into their work area and their work environment, um, into their projects. Because Python is very easy to understand and to learn. You don't have to worry about syntax uh, like C++, the brackets, starting an if statement or else statement. Um, you also don't have to worry about, you know, the semicolons at the end. And that's a pain because you have to compile and if there's some error, then it could easily be a little semicolon. But uh, it's Python, it's not like that. Um, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. You just have to worry about the indentation. That way the actual compiler understands and knows that, hey, anything indented under this if statement should be executed if this is, if statement is true. Otherwise, just skip over it. I didn't learn any Python when I was a computer engineer a student, but I needed to learn it when I started actually working and started going into the workforce because they were using it a lot more and it's becoming a lot more popular. I think it's the number one programming language uh, to date, basically. So yeah, I would suggest Python as the second language that you should learn as a computer engineer and that you probably will. Even if you don't, um, as a student, you will learn it as an actual software engineer, computer engineer, whatever you wanna go into. So the third programming language that you'll most likely learn as a computer engineer is assembly language. Unfortunately, that's not something that would be very useful in the use, uh, workforce. Uh, if there's any jobs out there that deal with assembly language, then yeah, that would be a good, it would be a good reason to learn that language. But regardless as to whether or not you do get a job in that area, you will be learning assembly language, especially as a computer engineer, because you'll be taking courses like microprocessors, where you'll need to communicate with the actual hardware. And, you know, that involves learning the very low level programming. Um, and that is assembly language. There's the um, actual ones and zeros, the binary digits that will go and communicate to the hardware. That's the basic, you know, that's the basic input output of a 
computer and how you communicate with it. And then right above that is the assembly language. So assembly language is pretty difficult to understand mainly because it has a lot more numbers and symbols to it rather than words like C++ and Python. So it's harder for us to kind of like conceptually understand what the program is doing. And even if there's an error or some sort of um, issue with the program, it'll be that much harder to know where it's happening because we would have to look through the address in the chip and find where that you know issue is happening. The addresses are in hex and you'll have to you know convert that over to decimal to figure out where it's at in the code or you may not even get an error and you think that the program is working the way it should but for some reason you're getting this output that just doesn't make sense so you have to go through the actual address like address by address and making sure um, line by line that it is being updated the way you expect it to be updated. Assembly language is just one of those languages where you just kind of have to, you know, suck it up, um, try your best and to ask help when you need to because there are going to be TAs there that are going to help you with that. Um, and just go to them whenever you need help because they're the ones who have obviously the most exposure to it. So they're the ones who will be able to help you the most. Um, but yeah, that's the third language. The fourth programming language that you will most likely learn is MATLAB. And now I know MATLAB isn't exactly a programming language, um, but it does have the option to program scripts and to write scripts to produce the output and to you know, write code and do all that. So MATLAB I had used a lot and it wasn't exactly for my programming classes. So that's why I say it's not exactly a programming language that you will most likely learn. It just happens to be one that I had used and I needed to learn in order to complete assignments for you know other classes such as advanced engineering mathematics or some other computational courses that um, involve large data sets or involves arrays. I did use MATLAB for my machine learning course that I had taken last semester and that helped a lot. Um, I also used a little bit of Python there too, but uh, MATLAB is good for large arrays, um, matrices, obviously that's part of the name, but it also is good for machine learning type of work. And yeah, I think you will be learning MATLAB and it's pretty basic to, it's kind of similar to Python. There's not too much of a learning curve there, but um, it could also be kind of uh, not as efficient as the other programming languages because for classes and for coursework, yes, MATLAB would be a great option. Um, but for actual work in your job or for a large software program or for anything that involves large amounts of data, analyzing large amounts of data, MATLAB may not be the best option for that, um, mainly because it's very, it's, it'll either run very slowly and you'll have to find other ways to optimize the code, or it may not be able to process all that data and it'll just crash on you. That has happened to me before I had to upload a bunch of data and it just, it just crashed. Those are the top four languages that I think you'll be learning. Um, and like I said, these are just the four that I learned as an undergraduate student at my university. So it depends on where you go. You may not learn C++. I've heard of other universities where they didn't even touch on C++ and instead they touched on Java or they have more emphasis on Python. So it all depends on your university. So those are the main programming languages that you'll probably learn as a computer engineering student. If you guys have any other questions about it or if you want me to go into depth about each of these programming languages or if you want me to go and talk about other programming languages, then please let me know. And yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching, bye.